I am standing on the seawall that is the line of coastal defence protecting the land to the north of me. Without it, vast areas of Romney Marsh with its hundreds of businesses, thousands of homes and tens of thousands of acres of prime agricultural land would suffer the consequences of catastrophic flooding. This video explains what the Environment Agency and its contracting team at Van Ord has been doing to make sure the land stays safe. On the south coast between Folkestone and Cliff End near Hastings, there is a continuous line of sea defences that protect the inland area of Romney Marsh. Modelling shows what would happen if the sea defences were breached. So one of the roles of the Environment Agency is to protect coastal communities from flood and coastal risk management. We're down here at uh, on the Lid Ranges site, which is a stretch of coastline that runs from Jury's Gap behind me right the way through to the Dungeness Peninsula, which we call Lid Ranges. The ultimate aim of the project is to protect the Romney Marsh from uh, the effects of um, climate change over the next 25 to 50 years. Along this stretch of coastline, prevailing winds, waves and currents gradually drift the protective shingle eastwards. This can leave the green wall exposed to high tides and powerful waves, risking a breach in the seawall and flooding. The way the prevailing currents hit the coast here has created the largest shingle promontory in Europe and makes it an internationally recognised ecological habitat. The seawall sits within three different kinds of conservation area. It's a special area of conservation for rare habitat preservation. It's a special protection area for the conservation of wild birds. And it's a Ramsar site, which designates internationally important wetlands. The works are challenging here, not only because it's coastal work and you're dealing with the tide that's coming in and out every day. The MOD have got um, obviously control of the land behind us but the most challenging thing is really the environmental constraints we're having to work with not just the natural processes but also the very very special environment that is the Dungeness Peninsula. The special flora and fauna that we find uh, within the, the scheme boundaries is uh, obviously the vegetated shingle which you know, is, is the first thing you notice and it has plants like uh, sea kale, uh, sea beets, uh, yellow horn poppy um, and as you go further into the um, ranges, the, the vegetation becomes more established and you get grasses growing and uh, uh, lichens. Uh, we also have the uh, nesting avocets in the three lagoons. Uh, avocets are a Schedule 1 bird under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. We've also got the Defolins lagoon snail, which are in the lagoons at uh, Southbrooks. In the winter, we, the, we have um, mute swans and um, various other wildfowl, wildfowl and waders that will use the lagoons. The MOD has had their life on ranges on the site since 1869. Since that date to today, it has been, the site has been used for pre-deployment training and various operations that the British military has been involved in. During the winter storm of 2019 and 2020, Storm Dennis and Kiara hit the site. At that point, there was significant overtopping and damage to the Green Bank. This created flooding on site inland for up to 1.5 miles. It was at this point the EA came in and conducted emergency works by reinforcing the Green Bank as well as providing additional pumps to remove the excess water from site. It needs to be noted that if we were to uh, lose the Green Bank Green Wall, we, it could create a catastrophic event and, provide, uh, and create significant damage to the Romney Marsh area. After Storm Dennis, uh, this frontage took a massive battering. There was waves breaking up over the seawall into the MOD firing ranges and we had, a, we had a breach right back at Jury's Gap. So the first thing we had to do was mobilise to get um, about 380 metres of rock revetment in place just to contain the, uh, the sea, to stop it getting through into a more permanent breach. We repaired and extended the timber groin field by 1.8 km with an additional 32 timber groins. The timber groins, which are made of specially sourced tropical hardwood, round down the beach and act as a barrier to slow down the drift of shingle to the east. 
We also repaired the green wall that runs along the top of the beach. We needed to strengthen the inner core of the wall in parts, but also to repair the roadway that runs along the top used by the Ministry of Defence. Well, at Van Oort we have a specialist trailing suction hopper dredger called uh, the Utrecht. With the Utrecht we dredge uh, the material from the uh, English Channel at about uh, 50 nautical miles uh, away from, uh, from the project location. The dredged material is being stored on board. Once the vessel is full we sail back to uh, Juris Gap. Then we connect the, the trailing suction hopper dredger to a sinker pipeline, which is uh, lying on the seabed. And then we pump the material on the, on the shore here at Juris Gap. Once the material is on shore, we distribute it along the various uh, groin bays with, uh, with land-based uh, equipment, such as dozers, excavators and, uh, and dump trucks. What we're bringing in, apart from all the rock, the rock revetment, is 390,000 tonnes of shingle to refurbish the whole shingle frontage. There was an additional piece of work that was required at Denge Outfall. Uh, Denge Outfall discharges fluvial water from inland, so on the Romney Marsh, out to sea. And it's an important part of the scheme that that is allowed to retreat in line with the, as the coastal defences retreat. So the work we had to do is to strengthen the outfall at a point further inland that'll be the final line of the defence in 25 years time. We've got a hugely challenging zero carbon objective for the Environment Agency. This scheme contributes to that. Um, fortunately, because we're working with the MOD, we're, in, we're able to trial um, low carbon concrete for some of the concrete elements, which is um, a really interesting trial and will help us reduce carbon in other schemes around the country as well. On this project, we chose to use the lowest carbon concrete for the two kilometre roadway. We knew it was going to be strong enough because we knew the weight of the traffic that will be using the roadway and we created concrete test slabs within the compound to prove it. We chose to use earth friendly concrete which has got no cement in the mix. We also introduced basalt reinforcement which is basalt rock crushed, mixed with resin and extruded into bars. This replaces the steel reinforcement. The combination of earth friendly concrete and basalt reinforcement reduced the carbon footprint of this element of the works by 60%. We'll be monitoring performance of the concrete over time. If it performs as expected, we'll be able to use on other sites, as well as use as a evidence to the wider construction industry as the product that meets British standards. Well, we have been uh, able to work closely together with the EA to reduce the carbon emissions on this project. Uh, for the dredger, we are uh, operating it in its most efficient way in order to reduce the fuel consumption during the dredging, the sailing and the discharge operations. And by reducing the fuel consumption, uh, obviously we are also reducing the carbon emissions. On the land here, on the, on the, on the beach, uh, with the distribution of the material, we are using land-based uh, equipment such as uh, excavators, dozers and, and uh, dump trucks. And all this equipment is operating on, on biofuel. And for the welfare units on site, we have uh, executed them with uh, solar panels in order to, for them to be self-containing. We also have electric charging points for the, uh, for the cars uh, on, the, on site here. All these initiatives has helped us to reduce the carbon emissions on this project. The completed works here are another piece of the sea defences from Folkestone to Cliff End in Hastings that acts as protection for the whole of Romney Marsh. But with rising sea levels and more frequent extreme weather events due to climate change, there is more that the Environment Agency and its partners will need to do. Next is a really interesting development because we've got about 22 years of this scheme and then we've got to look at how we gradually roll the defences back and how we continue to protect those at risk from flooding inland. Maintenance will continue for 22 years, but we've really got to start looking at what happens in 22 years time. 
I'd really like to thank everyone involved in this project from not just Environment Agency staff and our suppliers who have worked so hard to get the scheme designed, get it built, the MOD, Natural England, um, to get to a point of success that for the next 25 years, the Romney Marsh is protected from the sea is a great result.